One of my more embarrassing moments from my teenage years, of which there are quite a few, starts out with a crush I had on a girl. My friend, who knew the girl and who knew me well enough to know that I would never make the first move, arranged with the girl that Uy, Anton will be calling over the landline and then got me to call the girl. All of this happened quite fast and since I'm an idiot, I basically didn't know what to say to the girl and so I said, I'm really sorry for this call. Our mutual friend forced me into it. In my defense, I meant it more like I would never impose myself talking on you. But it came out to the girl more like I didn't want to be talking to her. Napilitan lang ako. Which was the exact opposite of how I felt. So in short order, the girl told my friend that I don't think Anton is really into me. And my friend called me all upset asking why I went and said a damn fool thing like that. Mahirap talaga magin torpe. And this was way back in the day we were still using landlines. Since tech has improved so many things about our lives since then, I wonder if it has also improved how to bridge that gap between this is a stranger I want to get to know more to this is someone I'm in a relationship with. Dating was still a place where gender roles were still really traditional. You know, men were still expected to pursue women and women had to wait for men to ask them out and all of these things. So she really wanted to switch that on its head by encouraging women on Bumble to make the first move and start the conversation. That's Lucille, Bumble's communication director for the Asia Pacific region. Bumble is a dating app, and what makes it stand out is that it shifts the power of saying yes to starting a conversation over to the girl. Guys can indicate women they would like to get to know better, but a conversation can only start if the girl swipes right on the guy too. So swiping left is a no and swiping right is a yes and then you sort of go about your your swiping journey and if someone also swipes right on you then you get matched and in a heterosexual connection between a man and a woman the woman speaks first on the surface this approach liberates women a lady's default answer to an advance is no a guy can only start conversing with her if she has swiped right on the guy also and she can't see which guys have swiped right on her so an admirer is rejected without consequences, without the lady being labeled difficult or uptight or as someone who sends mixed signals, etc. But it's also very freeing for guys too. Since the consequence of rejection is very minor, you just don't hear anything from the person you swiped right on, and very private, you weren't turned down, say in a noisy bar full of people who could see you getting rejected, your ego doesn't take a hit. One of the biggest challenges with dating and especially online dating before Bumble was um, in for heterosexual dating was like male aggression, mm. you know, and really aggressive first messages, very sexualized or very because like what is happening is that, you know, men are when they're sort of in that environment, they're almost anticipating getting rejected. Mm. So they are opening a conversation or like opening an interaction in this very aggressive yeah overcompensating manner like dominating kind yeah. of way and i think a lot of the psychology behind that is you know if i get rejected like i'm almost like playing a character yeah you know yeah. it's almost like not really me so that then yeah. i don't need to like feel that rejection it, it wasn't me and, it was this other persona yeah, yeah exactly i think a lot of men have that persona in dating because they've been told over and over again that they have to be the aggressor. They have to pursue women. You know, that it's this, like, you are the predator and yeah. the woman is the prey. Yeah. All this, like, really unhelpful social scripting that we receive. Yeah. Successful and, men are like this. And then, yeah, it's all, all that yeah, aggression. This is what They're, a man looks yeah. like. And he's aggressive and he goes after what he wants and he does all of this. And it's yeah. like, it's just ultimately not true. Now, all of this sounds good in theory, but does it work in real life? Bumble works really well because as a male, it gives, I swipe right on them. It gives them the option to like me or not, and it saves me time. Uh, I was actually advised by a good number of people that Bumble would be the option if you're looking for something more serious. Okay. And I actually, it actually did turn out to be quite true. Um, I did try Tinder. Um, but I did notice that whatever matches I have there, uh, it seems as if they were more superficial mm -hmm. in what it is they wanted. Let's just put it 
that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Humble uh, always yielded better quality results. And that was mine and Jerry. She's based in the Philippines, him in the States. They met online through Bumble during the pandemic and now they're engaged. And the low stakes approach of Bumble does seem to have helped the initial contact between them. I just randomly <laughs> found her on the internet and on, on Bumble and I swiped right and yeah. didn't think anything more. I, I never thought I'd hear from her. And I did. Um, so I, I really wasn't thinking it through <laughs> initially. <laughs> it's a long, it, Philippines are, it, it's quite a commute from the United States. Yes. If you're listening to this as a podcast, you didn't see Ma'an in that last clip lean into Jerry as he discussed how the Philippines is just a little bit far from the States. There's clearly a lot of affection here, a genuine connection, which literally would not have happened if not for Bumble. The online space is an opportunity to meet people you never would have met otherwise. So a really interesting trend for 2024 is actually around sort of generational romances and people being more open to like age gap relationships and dating someone younger or, or older than them. And I think that is kind of a natural evolution of being able to access, you know, pools of people and like assess your compatibility. Whereas, you know, when you go out with your friends, you know, from school or from uni, you kind of stay in your like very tight yeah. bubbles mm -hmm. um, and kind of one of the only places that you meet people of more varying ages from you is then, you know, in the workplace. And that's not always like an appropriate dating the best, environment. Yeah, the best place to look for a partner. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. So what Could we're get really in trouble. Seeing, yeah, exactly. Whereas, you know, an uh, online dating platform is, is very different. You know, that's what people are there for. And the good thing is, that you can, you know, increase or decrease your age settings on Bumble and just have a look. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the people that you're seeing will are compatible with, you're compatible with their age settings. So you're only seeing people that are also interested in dating someone your age. So it's a good way to kind of just like test the waters, you know, have some different conversations. But of course, the online space has its own unique dangers as well. Scammers, toxic behavior, unwanted pics of male organs. They're called private parts for a reason, guys. And so Bumble has invested heavily and worked hard to deal with all of that to ensure that their users have a quality experience. The, the main concern from our audience is, you know, fake profiles and scam accounts. And we know that across all types of social media, you know, that's an issue um, online. And so we have built a number of features to protect our users against that. One is photo verification tools. So you can use our photo verification system that's um, powered by human moderation and AI that will basically give you, you have to go through a series of steps and then it gives you a blue shield to add to your profile that says that you match your photos, you're a human being, you are who you say it's you are. It's actually you, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that is, um, you know, and we always say, you know, match with people that have verified their profile and if they haven't, you know, you can ask them to verify their profile, you know, before you start chatting or um, you can also filter so that you only see people with verified profiles. You know, if that is a concern for you, I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, and we also have just launched recently um, on Safer Internet Day a new feature called Deception Detector, which is powered by AI to help detect spam and fraudulent accounts with, I believe, 99% accuracy, which mm. is really fantastic. And that is helping us sort of add a sort of shield of protection for our users that removes a lot of scam accounts before they even have the chance to you know, match with people and, and start talking. So that's really important feature for us. And that's a, that's a most recent development. So the system diligently weeds out undesirable accounts, whether they are bots or toxic users. But ensuring that both parties have good intentions is just the beginning of a relationship. The rest is, of course, up to the people involved. 
And if you've ever had to meet someone IRL that you've only ever interacted with online, yung first eyeball ninyo kumbaga, you know it can be a nerve-wracking experience. That's one thing about just meeting someone on the internet, yeah. you know. Um, uh, there's so many things that you miss out. You don't know what a person tends to look like, like from head down. You don't know how tall yeah. they are. You don't know yeah. if they have big feet, you know, <laughs> things like that, right? So, so uh, meeting each other the very first time when he landed in the airport, you know, you, you really get kaba. You, yeah. there, well, there's yeah. nervousness and yeah. stuff. Well, you land at like 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yes, you're disheveled. <laughs> when I landed, I was like, okay, we vetted each other. I, I looked uh, her up on, on the inter mm. internet. Yeah. And I'm a teacher, so it was easy to find me. Yeah. You know? Yes. So when I, but when I landed in the Philippines the first time, I'm like, is there going to be somebody waiting for yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. am I just, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 4 30 in the morning. Yeah. And, and a relationship is a long term thing. You just don't. Get over all of your doubts after one meeting in real life. So I think our first trip was either Anilao or Tagaytay. You know, so I was driving and then we stopped in Eslex, you know, at the gas stations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, so he went down to use the bathroom and then I also went. And he started thinking when he was, what were you thinking? I was thinking, when I come out, will she still she, be there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She has my passport. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. has yeah. everything that yeah. I own. Yeah. yeah, his wallet, his <laughs> cell phone was in the car. You know, he didn't bring it to the bathroom. Yeah. So he what, had that moment of, what? What, what, what am I doing in this strange there? gas station? Yeah, outside what of Manila. Yeah. In the middle of, <laughs> yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. Yes, yes. Of, <laughs> yeah. So, so yes. you have those funny moments which you normally wouldn't yeah. have if you meet the conventional way. Uh, yeah. But now we don't have those anymore yeah, after no, no. Yeah. a year and a half. Yeah. Man and Jerry did have some concerns unique to a relationship which started out online. But as the relationship progressed, many of their concerns now sound just like any other couples. All long-term couples, it seems, regardless of how and where they met, will end up dealing with something very low-tech. Paperwork. Because right now, that's one of the biggest impediments that we have. Um, it's trying to understand the legal and tax implications on both sides. Yes, yes. You know, yes. How, you know how Philippine banks always send you that form and yes. you have to sign it, yeah. ask if you have, yes, if you're yes. a yep. citizen, and then, you know, yes. right? So, so those things have made it much more complex for us to move things forward on paper. Ultimately, Bumble and other apps like it is a new way to do an old thing. Meeting people you might be interested in has always been difficult. At least now, there are more options available to do that. You know, there is absolutely, um, you know, nothing wrong with being introduced to people that you might be compatible with by your parents. Um, or by your family, other family members or your friends, you know, that is how people met each other for centuries before mm -hmm. dating apps came along. But I think the role that apps like Bumble have to play is, you know, working in, com in, in complement to some of those more, more traditional practices, because, you know, if you're going one by one to these like in-person meetings from within your sort of family circle, there's only so many people that you can realistically yes. yeah. <laughs> meet and they might not all be compatible for you. And there is on Bum access on Bumble to a community of people in your area, in your age range, you know, that you can filter for all sorts of different things. So if you're thinking about, you know, efficiency <laughs> and yes. access to people, it's vastly different. And with that efficiency and scope, of course, comes data. While we're all chasing after the same prize, love, a stable relationship, a partner who thinks our quirks are charming instead of annoying, the way we chase after that prize can differ greatly based on our backgrounds. Women in India send a lot more messages, mm -hmm. um, you know, per match, and that indicates um, that they 
women in India like to keep conversations on the app, you know, longer than um, in some other markets, probably because they are, you know, have a higher standard of, you know, verifying someone and, you know, more, a, a different environment around safety. So they yeah. want to make sure that they're keeping the conversation in the app for as long as possible. Um, and then, like you said, Singapore, very small <laughs> market. So they are, you know, looking in a much sort of smaller, tighter um, radius, tighter radius. Um, exactly right. And then um, in somewhere like the Philippines, you have um, <sighs> different considerations around filters, for example, like religion um, and like thinking about religion and education in both Singapore and Philippines is like quite more pronounced in comparison to a market like Australia. Oh. You know, people are really um, focused on education and religion as a measure of compatibility, mm -hmm. um, which is more elevated than what it is in some other countries. But Filipinos are also very romantic, you know, <laughs> like in their own, in, in their own yeah. way, yeah. you know, and, um, they, you know, they love love. So there's also a lot more um, sort of general sort of enthusiasm, I would guess, for the process of dating. Pinoy's do love love. But I mean, come on. It just really warms the heart when you see two nice people end up together. Who doesn't get a little sappy over that? I... I... I feel the strong connection. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm younger than you guys. I'm sure you've had more experience, but I, I, feel, I feel like this is a really nice pairing. I, I can feel the, the genuine affection. And of course, genuine affection is found in all healthy relationships, not just romantic ones. And tech, which brings potential romantic partners together, can also bring potential friends together. We also have an app called Bumble for Friends mm -hmm. that is about sort of platonic friend finding. Um, and that has been really popular in the Philippines as well. And I think that's really great because a lot of people listening might have been like, oh, but, you know, I'm in a relationship. Or, I'm not looking for that, that yeah. relationship. But like, like we sort of just touched on earlier, you know, a romantic relationship is only one part of your life. And... Um, friendship and friendship connection is really important as well. And there's a lot of people I think that could do with, you know, a wider friendship circle. And that's what Bumble for Friends is for. Which brings us back full circle to my earlier story. I totally messed up with that girl, but I was still grateful to my friend for trying to help me out. That was more than 20 years ago, but we are still friends to this day and we still communicate fairly regularly. He has fortunately stopped chatting me up to girls, something I'm sure my wife is thankful for. This episode was released on February 14, Valentine's, and whether you're celebrating alone, in a pair, or in a group, I hope that your relationship is healthy and that it has genuine affection. This is Tech Show But Friendly, Hardware Sugar's podcast, and I'm your host, Anton. We were produced by Nana Nadal. Our next episode explores the surprisingly gung-ho world of seniors learning about tech, and that drops February 23. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang hardware sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent table management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.